Hey, how's it going? Todd here with No Film School. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take these two little plastic buildings and turn them into this dystopian scene. So the trick here is to create a dystopian city using only a couple of elements and then put it all together inside of Adobe Premiere. And in this video, I'll show you how I did it. So I've been doing some experimenting with creating environments with miniatures and things like that. And so I bought these two little plastic buildings online for like six bucks a pop. And so I thought I'd go ahead and try and do some weird stuff with them. So first I called my good friend, Mike. He has been doing a lot of experimenting with prop weathering and turning Nerf guns into like movie props and things like that. And so I thought he could really help me to bring some texture and scale to these buildings. So he started by adding some base coat of kind of a grayish paint to the buildings. And then he went back over it with some black detailing to kind of give the buildings some more scale and texture and kind of give it a bombed out dystopian feel. And then from there, I just put a green screen behind a table and top lit the buildings with an Aperture 300D. And then so I just shot the buildings kind of rotated in various configurations across the entirety of the table. That way we could kind of turn each building into multiple buildings and kind of mix and match them in post. Okay, so let's head into Premiere. First off, we're gonna cut out each of our individual buildings. To do this, we'll drag a short section of each of them down on the timeline. Next, I'm going to add a quick garbage mask around each building using the pen tool in the opacity dropdown. Now we'll drop an ultra key effect onto one of the clips and start to dial in our key settings while looking at the alpha channel so we can see what we're doing. Using the matte generation and matte cleanup tools, particularly the pedestal, contrast, and midpoint settings, we just make sure the key looks nice and soft with no super harsh edges. Once we've got some good key settings on one of the buildings, let's repeat this process for every single clip of the buildings. To save yourself some time, you can right click on a finished clip and select copy. Then right click your other clips and select paste attributes. This will get you a good starting point on each building a little bit faster. Once you have each building keyed, put your playhead over each clip one at a time and click this little camera icon. This will allow you to save a .png file of each building. Make sure you click import into project for each one. And so here we go. Now I've got a bunch of cut out PNGs of these little buildings. It's time for the fun part. First, let's get our sky going. For this, I grabbed a free image of some angry looking clouds on Unsplash and then I dropped it onto the timeline. Next, I used a tint effect to change the colors around until I had something that looked kind of like that orange dystopian sky I was going for. Now, let's think about building this scene out in layers. We want each level of depth to be on its own layer. And Premiere has a great tool for that called nesting, which is a whole lot like pre-comps inside of After Effects. And there are really a lot of powerful things you can do with nests that you might not be thinking about. Let's build our first layer using a couple of the buildings that were shot closer to the camera. And with each element, we'll drop in a little bit of color correction just to make it sit in the scene the way that you envision it. Once you have a layer of buildings set up, you can select both of them and then select nest and this will put them together in their own single layer. Now we'll build out the rest of the scene using a variety of the buildings and just kind of nudging them into place and feeling it out until you get a nice looking composition. Once you have a setup that you like, we need to add some more depth. And the way we'll do this is with some haze and fog. So first let's click on the new item button here and create a color mat. We're gonna make a couple of them, a darker one for the far back objects and a lighter one for the ones closer. Now take each nested layer and create an empty video layer in between each one. Now in the furthest back slot, we're gonna add one of our color mat layers and draw a little mask across about halfway up the image using the pin tool from the opacity dropdown. And you're gonna to wanna to feather that out quite a bit. Now, holding the Alt key, we'll drag a copy of this into each little slot. On each of the color mat layers, we'll play with the opacity until it starts to look natural. And for the ones closer to the camera, we're gonna use the lighter color and set the blend mode to screen or add. This is a trick that all compositors use to sell depth. 
Now, if you want to add even a little bit more realism, you can nest the color mat layers and then add some fog overlay type elements with a mask around them to help sell the fog effect as well. So if you want to try this, I happen to have some fog elements of my own and I'll leave a link somewhere where you can download a couple of them for free and give this stuff a try yourself. Once you have your scene looking nice, you'll want to go ahead and add just one more layer of color correction on top of everything to get it looking solid and kind of married together. I'd also recommend adding some noise onto your image so that it doesn't just look like some floating planes. And also to add a bit of movement to the shot, I just animated the scale on each nested layer one at a time with the closest elements being scaled up the most and the further back you go, I scaled it less and less. This kind of gives the effect of some parallax. And so there you go. Even though this might be a lot faster and easier in After Effects, you can still do some pretty fun compositing tricks directly inside of Premiere, especially if you have a UFO that you can drop in. So as someone who has a bit of a compositing and visual effects background, it's uh, it's been fun experimenting and trying to find some new ways to do stuff with my hands where a lot of the work is done at the shooting level. And then all you got to do is just go into Premiere and put it all together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.